So this is... That's England. England, this Post is injury. you've just picked yeah, up just the injury. Th- yeah, yeah. What's going through your head at that stage? Uh, I'm pissed off, obviously, that I'm not on the field. Um, yeah, and then you're in that weird place of, like, you, you want them to do... <laughs> you want them to do well, um, but you're, like, you're kind of... Pit, you're, but you're pissed off because you're not playing yourself, but you want the team to do well. Um, and that's, yeah, that's, that's kind of that moment. But you didn't realise... Like, you don't realise... Like I obviously didn't know how serious things were. Mm. I knew it was serious, but I didn't think it was... You're not thinking my season with Leinster 12. is over, I'm going to miss out on this, this and this? Yeah, I didn't think 12 months later I was going to be not a player at a game, mm. essentially. Oh, is that first... That's uh, there are the boots. That's the white trim. So this is Ireland Pacific Islands. Last ever game at the Old Lansdowne Road, your Ireland debut. Eddie O'Sullivan has said, you're never going to make it wearing white boots. This is what... Is, did you get these specially designed? No, these are the compromise. Jeez, I'm a bit bigger there, lads, aren't I? Um, yeah, no, I think they were just like the ones that I'd saw that were out or something and I got them. Um, but yeah, that was first cap, 06, Pacific Islands. What's that day like? Um, thousand, I was like mad. Like numbers are funny. How to come into the game? The thousandth player to get capped mm. uh, with Fez and and Lukey. Uh, and Paddy Wallace, I remember, was man the match, and he kind of was a breakout game for him. I think. Um, yeah, a hell of a moment. I remember walking around the pitch um, with Darius and Dennis Hickey and that, and um, you know, a pretty cool moment to be honest. Yeah. Have you got forty family members in the crowd? I can't remember who I have there. I mean, I know all my mates would have been. It was so funny. Like, I mean, that stadium was obviously pretty old at the time. And that was when, like, you'd come down to the change room, right? And there was, like, a guy in black tie outside the change room giving you cups of tea and coffee. It was bizarre. Um, was there a bar right beside it? Maybe that was the other end. Not in the change room, anyway. No, not, not, clearly not in the change room. Maybe that was down the other end of the um, stadium. Oh, there was the bars in yeah, the corner, yeah. the Wanderers one. And yeah. uh, it was a Bechtiver Lansdowne had another one. Um but yeah, no, it was, uh, I had a lot of good memories now. I ended up playing in, in the last club game there as well, in um, the Leinster Ulster game on New Year's Eve, I believe. Mm. Yeah. What's the next one? Hey, oh, that was the last game of the series um, that we actually won, mm. wasn't it? That's what I'm thinking of. That's why I'm happy. That the last <laughs> game of the series in South Africa or the last game of the series in Australia? No, that's South Africa. Yeah, South which he, so at that stage the series is gone. Series is gone. We've lost, but I think we did a lot in that game by maybe reigniting a bit of a uh, bit of life into it. Um, the team that is um, tough series is probably one of the toughest series that I've ever played in because that that we nearly won the first game but didn't. That second game went right to the wire, as we know. Um, we you know we. Could, you know, things played out differently maybe we could have won it um, and then you didn't know coming into that last week because you'd lost two games right What, what which way he was going to go with the team and stuff like that and um, yeah I was lucky enough to get the nod for the third one and uh, yeah it was great it was great to win um, yeah it was it was, it was was pretty cool I remember Ugo Manya going the length of the field and uh, scoring a try and just that famous photo he's, he's like that to the crowd and that's I mean I fell in love with the 97 lines were, um, tour. Mm. 97, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, Got it was. that team behind us? It was. It was. It was watching them. I, me- I don't know why, but I always remember Keith Wood pretending to be a whale in the pool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Squirting water. It's on the DVD. Because yeah. um, I was in and out in Irish college at the time in Clashton Rin and they'd record the game on a Saturday for us and we'd come out myself and my mate would, would, would come to the, my mate's granny's house on a, on a Sunday morning. And we'd watch, we'd watch the, the game, and because no, you, there's no social media, yeah. so you, didn't, you didn't know the result, you know. Um, and that's when you fell in love with it, and then to go on a tour and E McGeekin as well is, um, it, was, it was probably one of the last old school tours that I ever did. Is there more place for that big emotional speech on a Lions tour than there is a club international level? Man, you just saw some. That, I mean, there were some old school players. There was players in that that that. that Play that had played amateur rugby still, you know. And now, you know, you come out of school, you go straight into academy, and it's all very streamlined. But there was like, like I remember a room with Phil Vickery, him smoking in in our in our room, you know. And he was old school, but he was a gentle giant. But then in the in the change room, him and was it him and Sheridan were headbutting each other in the change room before the game in Durban, I think it was. And you're just going, like, whoa, this is another level of intense. Um, 
But I, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was it was one of the last old school tours that I was I was ever on. More enjoyable because of that. Um, more enjoyable. Well, yeah, well, it was a good crack. Yeah, I mean, there was a big call that I mean, you I mean you play two games a week for about four weeks, mm. right? And um, you know, if you if you play on the on the Wednesday, for example, you you go out like. It was like Paulie was the captain. And there was a call that everyone down to the team room. When you got back to the hotel, there was food there, there was beers. Everyone had a, a beer or a drink as a squad. All of us there. Um, if you played that day and you weren't playing on the Saturday, you were all out. Right, right. You were out. You had to go out, pretty much. It was kind of like an unwritten rule. Um, if you played that day but you were we were doubling up, you could go out for a little bit, but you could peel off early doors. No, but no questions asked. Um, and that was the same then for Saturday, go to Wednesday. But no matter what, even if you went out on the Wednesday, everyone fronted up Thursday session. Or if you went on the Saturday, if there was a Sunday session, you fronted up. And uh, that's what I mean. But it was kind of it was a bit old school. Um, you had kind of some old school players on it, like you had Simon Shaw on it, uh, Phil Vickery, Sher- Sheridan. Um, you know these kind of guys who who had a lot of experience at that time. Um, and it was a bit of a, it was it was it was cool, man. It was cool to be around them. Brian O'Driscoll said that over those two Lions tours you're on, you were never treated by a physio once. Yeah, yeah. How's that my possible? Fi- my file is about like that big, literally. And it's probably only about that big because of last year. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The physios, they love me because they didn't see me. Like it's nothing. funny, man. Two Lions like- tours, not one knock. No, no. And it was hilarious. Like my, Does it get to the stage where there's four days left and you've got something you're like oh, no just. no it was felt like I talked to them and I come down and they chat because I did medical engineering so I was always fascinated about the body but uh, I chat away to them like but it was funny I said to my missus when I started getting treated because it is a year ago she was like like you don't know the physios <laughs> <laughs> in Leinster even yeah. I was like I know them but I don't know them because um, you don't you, you haven't know. spent long enough lying down letting them manipulate yeah, you yeah yeah and it was hilarious like kind of get to know them properly yeah um but yeah, that's just uh, yeah, not once, not once. Do we have another one? We have another one. Oh, there we go. You can see Brian's pretty happy. Raj looks happy, doesn't he? So you've you've got to worry about the coaches. You, you you've got to worry about going home afterwards. But right now you've got the two greatest players in Irish rugby history staring you down for getting sent off in New Zealand. Yeah, I'd love and making the most difficult challenge in world rugby a whole lot more difficult. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, Brian just doesn't look happy at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, look, it 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 wasn't a great time. Um, it wasn't a great moment. We had to stay in. Uh, we had the hearing. I think the next day, um, and I don't know. I remember going, "I'll be grand. I'll only get a week ban." Like, who was I kidding? I, you know. Um. But again, you know, I had to go in there, I had to own it straight away and, and you know, um, apologise, which I did. And I remember I sat beside Richie, actually, the following November series in um, in when they came up to us. Um, you know, obviously apologised to him. Mm. Um, you just did what pretty much every back row in world rugby <laughs> had, had certainly probably uh, thought about. I was young. I was, I was, I was, you know, I was, it was, you know, a very reactive thing to do. Um I'm a laid back person so it was it was very kind of out of character for me and look I can't you know it wasn't a good decision by me at all but um yeah yeah unfortunately it happened it happened you know and I I didn't I I said to see yeah I said to CJ after the I was trying to bring a bit of levity to the moment after um a day or two after he got the red card against South Africa and I was like man you know at least I'm not the only guy now with a red card. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh Lear for Ireland. He kind of saw the the, the 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 funny side of it, but um You were sort of the Kevin Moran of uh Irish rugby. The <laughs> for a while. It was, it was something I didn't like to have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, at least you've company now. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah, the bully. The bully, the bully, the bully. Is that your life outside rugby? Uh yeah, unfortunately I had to put my dog down last summer. But um yeah, you know, um I always say a dog makes a home. And uh, he definitely made it. Like I, I got Jay Z when I was living on my own. So it was just two blokes in a house, you know, uh, and some good times. That was uh, coming into 2011 World Cup, I believe. Yeah. So um, definitely a character. I'm a big dog person. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, that, that's a reminder then of the younger days, very much. 
Yeah, uh, it was. Yeah, that's a bit of a throwback, all right. Yeah, yeah. a little bit plumper in some of those <laughs> uh, pictures. It's funny. I mean, it's funny, man. Like, you, you you forget like like seeing those and seeing myself now. Like I've even even since I've stopped playing, like I would my playing weight would have been like, first thing would have been a hundred. Uh, what would have been? I would have been about 110, 111, 12 kilos uh, day of a game. And like I weighed myself this morning and I'm just tipping just about getting to 104 kilos. It just starts <laughs> flying off you. So uh, hopefully I don't revert back to those. Yeah, days. It's not always the way because you got used to a nice old diet, I'm sure, during your rugby days well, yeah, where you, you could pile when you on. When you don't train as much, but for me anyway, when you don't train as much, your appetite falls off the cliff. So um, trying to. Like you have to go, oh, geez, I didn't have breakfast or lunch. I better eat something. Um, but I like to train, you see. I, I mean, it's what I know, isn't it? Training. So um, there's different things that I can't do and stuff because of, of my injury. But um, I can still train. So right. I'm, I'm still training away. Are we going to see you doing 5Ks, 10Ks, all that jazz? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Um, I don't know. Who's, the, who's, done, that? who's done them? Hmm. Anyone? I don't know. Can't mind. I um. I don't. I no. I, I. You know what? I might play paddle, in when I'm on holidays. You know that? Have you come across paddle? No. It's kind of like a cross between squash and tennis. Okay. But with like kind of beach bats. All right. Just on the beach. No, no. It's like kind of in this like it's kind of like a cross between a squash court and a tennis court, but like squash court size and stuff. And I played a little bit with Onomali and seems like a are you sure this isn't just some sort of game that <laughs> we made up, like, up when you're on holiday it could have been. and we call it paddle <laughs> it could have I need been. to go home and tell everyone that I'm like, used to golf so I can't take up golf so I have to find something that gets me in at the, the bottom floor well Pat listen you could be a world leader at paddle <laughs> nobody else has ever played it you and Owen O'Malley world, world number champions. one world number two <laughs> yeah. Woo! pat yourselves on the back Thanks a million for watching. If you want to subscribe, well, there's the button right there. If you want to see more videos, hit that down there.